see why the talent is the world's best. Wednesday, 8, 7 Central on CBS. It's called the saddest weekend in America. The first of six months with no football. A national crisis in spirit called football withdrawal syndrome. Football is like America. As a sport and a nation, we root for the believers, the long shots, and the never quitters. The ones who invent the future. We never know where greatness will come from, but we know it always starts with the same question. What if? What if football didn't have to end in February? What if players who missed a big show by a fraction of an inch or a tenth of a second finally got a second chance to change football forever? What if we didn't have to say what if? The Alliance of American Football. rejoice because we've got the cure for your winter blues. Welcome to Alliance All Access, coming to you live from the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. Tonight we ring in a new era of professional football. It's opening night of the Alliance of American Football and we've got two games on tap. Most of you will see the San Diego fleet led by Mike Marks, the architect of the greatest show on turf, take on the San Antonio Commanders. Others of you will get the Atlanta Legends against former Heisman winner and college football Hall of Famer Steve Spurrier's Orlando Apollos. Hello everyone, I'm Jamie Erdahl alongside Kurt Warner, the only person to be inducted into both the Pro Football Hall of Fame and the Arena Football Hall of Fame. This guy is living proof a league like this can develop stars. Kurt, we can all appreciate what you accomplished in your career now, but take us back to where you were in this photo and how you <laughs> developed into this person. Well, the crazy thing, Jamie, is everyone has the same dream. It's just unfortunate we all have different paths. So for a guy like myself that sat on the bench for four years in college and got cut from my first NFL team, the Alliance is a dream come true, an opportunity to prove to the powers that be that you can play football no matter what the past says, no matter what your last experience says. And I know that's what these players out here are thinking about tonight. Yeah, it's nothing like an opening night. It's a dream come true, as Kurt said, for so many of these players looking to capitalize on this second chance. So what are they feeling right now is they have an opportunity to snap a football for the first time for some of them in such a long time. No, and it's about playing football. You know, that's the thing about it is that, you know, when I got cut by the Green Bay Packers and I'm going okay how do I prove to people I can play I just wanted to play football so there was arena football there was NFL Europe at the time but it was all about going I'm not going to get any better just running drills mm -hmm. I need to get between the lines I need to compete I need to play football and that's what these guys are thinking is wow I get another chance to get out on the field and prove to people I can play this game all right we have given you some pretty broad strokes uh, as to why we're here and a look at the Alliance of American Football. But now we want to take a look at the who, the what, and the where of this exciting new league. The Alliance of American Football is built around this idea of the three stars, fans, players, and the game. I've been talking for quite some time about the need for a developmental league, and I've believed in it. We have 18. Eight great cities and venues uh, come watch football. The first game is February 9th. We play 10 games, and we'll have a, a playoff of two games at the end. It'll be exciting. I think the fans will be very pleased with what they see. A lot of these kids really just wanted to show the league that they can play at the next level. You're going to hear some names of players that are familiar to you, and you're going to hear coaches' names that you're very familiar with. Mike Singletary, Steve Spurrier, Rick Neuheisel, Mike Martz, Dennis Erickson, Mike Riley, and Tim Lewis. And if you're going to do this, you got to go out and get a really good football person, and that's Bill Polian. None of the previous leagues have ever had a level of experience we have. Our coaches and our GMs and our executives alone have over 475 years of NFL experience. The fans should expect quality football, so I'm super excited to be a part of it. It's not gimmicky. It's true to the game. We're going to have some things in our league that are different from the NFL, but we're not going to stray away from what real football is. 
that day when everybody doesn't know what to do with themselves because the Super Bowl was last weekend. You got six months to next season. Well, guess what? Next season is next week now. I'm real excited about it. I mean, now it's real. Well, I think there's going to be success here. Big names, familiar faces. Kurt, what is it about the who in that video that really sold you on the alliance? Well, to me, it's about credibility, right? If you're a player and you're going to get into a new league, okay, tell me who the coaches are. Tell me who's going to be involved. Wow, there's a who's who when it comes to that. If you're a fan, okay, who am I going to be watching? What am I going to be seeing? And you see from top to bottom, there are quality individuals that have had so much success at every level of football. So it adds an automatic credibility to yep. what's happening tonight. As a fan, speaking of, this will not look unfamiliar to you. The Alliance will use NFL rules, but with a few twists. You can expect faster games. There are fewer commercials and a shorter play clock. There will also be no kickoffs or extra points, so teams will automatically go for two after every touchdown. With no kickoffs, you also have no onside kicks, so a trailing team can opt for a fourth and 12 from their own 28 after a score, but that option is only available when you are down by 17 or more or behind within five minutes going into the fourth quarter. The Alliance will also employ a sky judge, an eye in the sky, who can buzz down to correct an obvious or egregious call or non-call. And finally, the overtime, just like college football, each team gets one possession from the opponent's 10-yard line. Regular season games can also end in a tie. Kurt, let's focus on just a couple of those. First and foremost, it's a conversation that's commonplace in football, which is the kickoffs. Why did the Alliance eliminate it? Well, the hot button issue is safety, right? It's all about player safety. We've heard about it from the youth level all the way up to the NFL level and so kickoffs is one of those plays that is very dangerous from that standpoint of a player perspective so we eliminate that uh, and I love some of the other rules that they have too I love the no onside kicks onside conversions because I'm a guy as a quarterback I don't want to put the ball on the kickers on the kickers foot I guess I should say I want to put it in my hands, hands yep. and have an opportunity to continue a game and then of course the sky judge is going to be a hot topic right now especially after the NFC championship game and the call the non-call that wasn't made in New Orleans so love that idea too that if there's something going on as a player as a coach as a fan you just want to get it right all right we're just getting started here it's time for a quick break but upon our return legendary football mind Bill Polian the co-founder and head of football for the Alliance joins us to discuss the birth of this exciting new league stay tuned They can't stop us. They can judge or dismiss us, but we'll come back. Because you can't stop pride or power. You can't stop speed or spirit. You can't stop genius or passion. Or you can't stop coming together, anticipating, celebrating. You can't stop the players. You can't stop the places. You can't stop Sunday or Saturday. You can't stop football, and they can't stop us. The Alliance of American Football. For the first time in the history of pro sports, here's the app as fast as every player in the game. The Alliance app delivers revolutionary technology, real-time play-by-play gaming, instant interactivity, truly a game changer. Get the Alliance app today. Live predictive gaming at full speed. Call the plays. Unprecedented and at your fingertips. Available in the App Store and Google Play today. Welcome back to Alliance All Access. Our two Alliance games will be getting underway shortly with two or more, with two more tomorrow, including the opener on CBS Sports Network between the Memphis Express and the Birmingham Iron. That's at 4 Eastern only on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Speaking of Memphis, Christian Hackenberg is there now after his stint in the NFL. Reports are that he has fixed a mechanical flaw with his throwing. Kurt, why was that so important for him? And can it take hold in this kind of opportunity? Well, the crazy thing is I know people are going to look and go, how in the world could he go to a different league than the NFL and correct some issue that he's had? But the funny thing is, is if you're not starting in the National Football League, so much time is devoted to a game plan, to the week-to-week -week games, that you don't get a lot of time to correct and yep. work on those little things, especially if you're in a backup role. And so that's what's so great about this league is an opportunity to get in front of some other coaches, to play football, and to work on some of those little nuances that are probably the reason that a guy like Christian Hackenberg, as talented as he is, isn't sticking with an NFL team. And as we discussed earlier, just 23 years old, so the opportunity ahead of him to fix that kind of problem. 
them. All right, for more on our game, though, tonight between the San Diego Fleet and the San Antonio Commanders, here's the guys on the call, Spiro Ditas, Tiki Barber, and Trent Green. All right, Jamie, here we go. Just a couple of minutes away from a night that uh, we've been thinking about and anticipating. And, guys, the night is finally here as we kick off a brand-new football league. What do you anticipate? What do you expect? I think we're going to see some really good football. So many of these players have connections to the National Football League. All of the coaches do. And I think this is a second opportunity for a lot of them to make that dance. Well, I think what you, to agree with you, Tiki, they're hungry. These guys are hungry. Not only the players and coaches, but the officials. They want to get an opportunity. They're looking to make that next step to try and get into the NFL. The word you keep hearing talking to players and coaches and officials is development and obviously a big part of that focuses on the quarterback position two starters who have had a little bit of a taste of the nfl mike Berkovici and logan woodside what do you guys anticipate trent we'll start with you with woodside the starter for san first, antonio first with logan woodside you know he just was notified he was going to be the starter two days ago he, and he's excited for this opportunity put together an outstanding career while at toledo threw for over 10,000 yards was the 2017 mac player of the year was drafted in the seventh round by cincinnati and put up some good numbers. Tennessee won the practice squad this past year. And Mike, Ber Ber and Mike Berkovici on the other side had such an exciting career at Arizona State, that big 500-yard game where he beat USC. He caught on with the San Diego Chargers, then the Los Angeles Chargers, but he's been a little bit of a gunslinger. He's on the short side. That's a good thing and a bad thing. While I led the preseason games in total yards from scrimmage, he had five turnovers, including three interceptions. That liability doesn't work in, the, in professional football. A couple of preseason to learn from Philip Rivers. Not a bad experience. We'll see what Berkovici looks like tonight as we send it back downstairs to Jamie. All right, guys, thank you so much. Joining us now, though, Bill Polian, a Pro Football Hall of Famer for his front office success just with the Bills, the Carolina Panthers, and, of course, the Indianapolis Colts where he earned that Super Bowl ring that we see right there. Bill, as the co-founder of this league, this night must feel pretty special to you. What is this moment? What is this emotion? Well, a lot of nervousness, you know, just like any other time the lights go on. It's not right? just us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, nervous and uh, excited and anxious to see what happens. I'm, I really think, Kurt and I were talking about this earlier, I think somebody's going to jump out, of, out, of, out at us tonight that no one ever gave a thought to, and we're going to create our own stars as this season goes along because when guys get a chance to play, those that have the talent jump to the fore, and you can never predict who it's going to be until the lights go on and they play for real. Hey, Bill, you've spent so much time at the NFL level. You obviously saw something there that made you say, hey, we need a league like this. What is it that was really this, that spearheaded this effort? Well, I think we, we're not developing quarterbacks as we should. We're not developing offensive linemen as we should. Uh, we, kids don't get enough practice time at the college level with the 20-hour rule on individual skill development. We need that. Guys need to learn the game if they're going to have the best chance to make it in the NFL. So we brought in NFL coaches who can teach them the NFL game. There have been ventures in the past that have not been successful. Why is it your brainchild here? How can it be so successful in putting stars on the field potentially in the fall? Well, I think the football will take care of itself. The crowd tonight is amazing. Yes. If we can keep this up, we're going to make it. It's that simple. We've got to give the fans a good show, the fans that are watching at home tonight a good show, a good reason to tune in again next week. And we got to give the fans here an opportunity to see good football. And I think both things are going to come to the fore tonight. Is there a long-term goal of the alliance that, that you see? What do you see five, ten years from now with this league? We would like to be firmly entrenched five or ten years from now and have the NFL say to us, here's your practice squad, guys. Mm. Get them ready to play. Here are your, your the young coaches, particularly minorities, that we think have a chance to be good. Train them. We can be the training ground for the NFL, and, and that's one of the reasons I got involved because I want to give something back to the game that gave so much to me. Why was it so important to find coaches that all had NFL experience across the eight teams? Well, because there's a way to do things in the NFL, mm -hmm. and if you're going to make it in the NFL, you have to know how to do that before you get there. Yep. And that's why we have those guys. All right, Bill, thank you so much for joining us. We are so looking forward to this season, and you're right, this energy in here is pretty incredible. All right, when we come back, we'll hear from the Orlando head coach, Steve Spurrier, and his Apollos as they are just minutes away from their opener with the Atlanta Legends. Before we step aside, though, some of the league's quarterbacks weigh in on what the alliance means to them. 
me, the alliance means opportunity. 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 It's football. It's another chance to play football. A shot at something that I've worked for my entire life. To me, the alliance means a second chance. Some of us have been in the NFL a little bit, and this is kind of a, a way for us to get back. As long as football keeps giving me the opportunity to play, I'm going to keep taking it. There's only so much time in your life you get to do this. Is this beautiful $5 pitcher from Buffalo Wild Wings half full or half empty? Well, that depends, really. Are you from New England? Come in this weekend for $5 select pitchers at Buffalo Wild Wings. Right, we are getting closer. Welcome back inside Alliance All Access, where the San Diego fleet are about to take on the San Antonio Commanders. Also getting underway at the bottom of the hour, the Atlanta Legends and the Orlando Apollos. For more on that one, let's send it to the guys on the call, Andrew Catalan and Gary Danielson. Jamie, a cool, breezy night is not dampening the spirit of the football fans here in Orlando. We're moving closer to the Alliance opener between the hometown Apollos and the Atlanta Legends. And hi, everyone. Welcome to Orlando with 13-year NFL veteran Gary Danielson. I'm Andrew Catalan. We'll hear from Melanie Cowens coming up. We've been around both teams all week, and the sense you get that all the players have a chip on their shoulder. They're not in the NFL, and they're very hungry to get back. Been there, and, and who can blame them, yeah. right? I mean, they've been there. They say, I just didn't get that break, and they know the league is not made up just of stars. There's plenty of jobs out there if you get the right chance. Just look at what the NFL is made up of. The biggest category is undrafted players. These guys you're going to watch tonight are going to be fighting for a job, and they know 32 teams are watching them tonight. And there's a lot of NFL experience in this game tonight, highlighted by both starting quarterbacks. In fact, for Orlando, Garrett Gilbert played in Carolina's Week 17 win over the New Orleans and Saints. they should make the biggest impact in the game, but you never know who's going to creep up, but these are the guys who are going to have the ball first. How about what Steve Spurrier said in 2000? <laughs> 2015 when he stepped down at South Carolina. We call this pulling a Romo. <laughs> he saw it coming. Who knows what will come in the future? The Orlando head coach is with Melanie Collins. Coach, when you departed South Carolina, you said you weren't sure what the future would hold for you in terms of coaching football. Well, here we are yeah. in the future. How would you describe the excitement and the nerves that you're feeling before this first game? Uh, like any opener, any opener at Florida, uh, Duke, South Carolina, and so forth. But, uh, yeah, it's a football night. Uh, just the bus coming in and so forth. Big crowd out there. Mm -hmm. Shoot, uh, I think the, the players are really thrilled and excited to be here. So it should be a heck of a game. Sure. Well, with having such limited game tape on your opponent, mm -hmm. how did you go about preparing for this game, and how was it different than maybe you're typically used to? Mm -hmm. Well, again, in college, you don't have any tape before the first game of the season. You, you go by maybe what they did last year and so forth. But we did have a practice game and they had one, so we, we know a little bit about each other. Uh, but generally, you, you don't know what to expect. You just hope you've got a plan for about whatever they do. Coach, it's great to have you back. Good luck. Okay, thanks, Melanie. <laughs> Spurrier and the Apollos against Atlanta. Can't wait to get this one going on CBS. Jamie? Guys, thank you. Joining us now, former Pittsburgh Steeler great, a two-time Super Bowl champion, Super Bowl 40 MVP, Heinz Ward. Heinz, as a head of football development for this league, you're eight, nine months into this role. What has this, what has the job meant to you and, and really coming into this opener tonight? Well, I mean, it's a great deal to me to have an opportunity to work with a guy like Bill Polian. I mean, think about the credibility of our league. And it starts from the top with Bill Polian all the way down to the GMs and the head coaches. When they had Charlie Eversall asked me to be a part of the Alliance. There was no 
question about it that I wanted to be a part. I feel like all these players are like rookies. They're my, they're my young <laughs> protégés, and, and all I want to do is help them succeed both on and off the field. So, so what was it? Why, why was it so important to you to get involved and be a part of something like the Alliance? Well, you know, being a leader in Pittsburgh for so many years, to have an opportunity to help these guys fulfill their dreams and teach them the game of football, but also the game of life. You know, you want to go out there. We want the best for our players, but having an opportunity to come out here and showcase their talents and what they can do, and the crowd, the crowd is just crazy. It's football. Mm -hmm. Football's here. The fans want more, and we're giving them that. We heard from Bill Polian. You mentioned Charlie Ebersol. I, I want to ask you about a quote he's been saying to us, which is, this is a league of opportunity for the players, but it's also a league of necessity for the ecosystem of football. Explain that to us, why football needs something like this. Well, uh, uh, you know, we want to be a complementary league to the NFL. Kurt, you know, I mean, having a, a developmental league only makes the NFL that much better because they have a different pool that they can pull, pull from. But these guys to be able to get coached by real coaches who've succeeded both at the collegiate and the pro level is just awesome for the guys. If I'm a free agent, a drafted free agent, mm -hmm. I want to come and be a part of the alliance to get that education, to learn how to play the game, but not just the game itself, but just, you know, off the field, you know, to be able to give them financial literacy, help educate our players, to help them with transition with life after football, because we all know we got some teammates that's out there that are still playing video games and stuff like that. So that was key for me. And we focus a lot on the players, but yeah. you and I talked at the quarterback draft about the development of not just players, but coaches, yes. young guys or, or former players that want to get into coaching. Officials, tell us a little bit about that process. Well, I think, you know, you say a league of opportunity. I think we want to kind of be the pipeline to the NFL. We have in coaches already. They, they set the tone. Look at Daryl Johnson, what he's doing as general manager for our San Antonio team. But players like, you'll see Anthony Beck on the sideline, yep. Eric Allen, those guys. It's just an opportunity for all our for players like us to give back to these young guys who need an opportunity so that's a blessing in itself and for me to be a part of it, man, I'm just happy to be here in San Antonio. You mentioned that pipeline, just some numbers behind this league so far. 71 players have graduated to the NFL. 35 of them have already come back to the Alliance. Are those the kind of numbers that you are looking for in terms of that push-pull, especially heading into this inaugural season? Oh, no question about it. I mean, I think having, having players that played in the league be a part of the Alliance would definitely help put a great product on the football field. I hate to hear the booze they already know who the, <laughs> the San Diego Fleet are taking the field behind head coach Mike Martz, a longtime San Diego native. He is back in the head coaching realm. First snap is fast approaching. This is Alliance All Access. More after this. Second chances are celebrated and dreams are becoming reality as San Antonio is about to take the field under Mike Riley and Logan Woodside as Trent and those guys mentioned earlier getting the starting nod at quarterback position Thursday of this week. We'll see both Marquise Williams though and Logan Woodside enter in this game for San Antonio. Kurt, I want to ask you about Mike Riley in particular. It sounds like you have a pretty special connection to him not only coming into tonight but from your family perspective. Well, I do. You know, Coach Riley was at Nebraska just a couple years ago ago and uh, he recruited my son who's uh, playing at the University of Nebraska right now so got a chance to know coach Riley unbelievable human being I think he's going to be great for these young men but obviously a phenomenal football coach as well with all the success he's had over the years all right let's talk about Logan Woodside a little bit coming in as we take a look at Mike Berkovici let's start with him actually coming out of Arizona State he, he gets an opportunity within this Mike Mart system which you know all too well <laughs> you should have heard the stories between Kurt and Trent Green what is it like to be a quarterback and survive in the Mike Mart system System. Well, it's one of those things. If you can survive in this system, you can survive in <laughs> any system. And, and talking to Coach Marks uh, just a little while ago, he's not pulling any punches here. I mean, he is giving them everything from back when I played, you know, the motions, the formations, the calls. So he's putting a lot of pressure on these quarterbacks. But but it's great for a guy like Mike Ber Bergovici. He's been in some camps in the NFL. Uh, another coach of mine, Ken Wisenhunt, was his coach at, at, when he was with the Chargers and said so many good things about Mike Berkovici, but that he needed to play in more games. He needed to be better in the moment. But well, he's going to get an opportunity to throw the ball around and have those chances to prove that he can play between the lines. Mike Riley told us on Thursday that when it comes to this week, he's going to, week to week, he's going to make a quarterback decision fresh every week. What does that tell you about how he's approaching this league? 
I think he's approaching it with competition matters, that we're going to let these guys compete every single time out, and we're going to give everybody an opportunity. That's the other thing. Only 30 days really together with these guys. So not only you're learning offense and you're coming into a new league, you've got to be able to put your best foot forward. And so I think his approach is we're going to make sure we have the best guy starting every single Saturday, Sunday afternoon. I just want to ask you one more thing about how this night is about to unfold. From what you saw from the rehearsal games that we went through a couple weeks ago and the energy that you feel in here now and the conversations we've had, what do you expect over the next two hours? Well, I tell you what, there is nothing better for players than to feel this energy, to see this, the, the people in the stands and to come out here with people screaming for you like they are right now. And so I know these guys are excited. And we always say every time you step on a football field, you're writing your resume. We have heard from several players that when they came down to making a decision between going to an NFL practice squad or coming to the Alliance, this is the decision they want to make. It's three stars, fans, football, and the game. We are about to see the Alliance unfold here on CBS, moments away from the first snap of the 2019 season. Thank you so much for watching Alliance All Access. We'll be right back.